Feature Funnies was an American comic book magazine published by Comic Favorites Inc. in the U.S. for 20 issues from 1937 to 39. Publisher Everett Busy Arnold formed Comic Favorites Inc. in collaboration with three different newspaper syndicates, the McNaught Syndicate, Frank Markey Syndicate, and Iowa's Register and Tribune Syndicate. Comic Favorites later became an imprint of Arnold's Quality Comics, established in 1939. Hiring cartoonist Rube Goldberg and Goldberg's assistant Johnny Devlin, Arnold in mid-1937 began publishing feature funnies from his office in Manhattan, and Goldberg drew many of the covers. The new material came from comics Packagers. Those were small studios that sprang up to produce comics on demand for publishers looking to enter the emerging comic book field. Arnold relied, eventually, mostly on Eisner and Iger, headed by Will Eisner and Jerry Iger. Arnold changed the title to Feature Comics, beginning with issue number 21. Feature Funnies number 1, cover date October 1937. Rube Goldberg provided the cover and interior art for this issue, which had the first appearances of Mickey Finn and Dixie Duggan. There is a Mile High Pedigree copy from the Edgar Church Collection. This was the first comic released by the new company Comic Favorites Inc., which would become Quality Comics. This was the last number 1 issue released in 1937 by any publisher, and was the final new publisher to enter the business in 1937. Some of the highlights of the issue include Joe Palooka, cover by Rube Goldberg, Star Snapshots is a two-page story written and drawn by Bernard Bailey, possibly featuring reprints from WAGS magazine. This was Eisner Iger shot material and was previously appeared in Wow What a Magazine a year earlier. Toddy was a two-page story from George Marco, a humorous story, and this was Toddy's first appearance in comics. And Jim Swift in a four-page story from Ed Cronin, and this is his first appearance. Lala Palooza is a four-page story from writer-artist Rube Goldberg. And Reuben Rube Goldberg, born July 4th, 1883, lived till December 7th, 1970, was an American cartoonist, sculptor, author, engineer, and inventor. Goldberg is best known for a series of popular cartoons depicting complicated gadgets that perform simple tasks in indirect, convoluted ways, giving rise to the term Rube Goldberg machines or any similar gadget or process. Goldberg received many honors in his lifetime, including a Pulitzer Prize for his political cartooning in 1948. He was a founding member and the first president of the National Cartoonist Society, and he is the namesake of the Rubin Award which the organization awards to the Cartoonist of the Year. The New York Evening Mail was syndicated to the first newspaper syndicate, the McClure Newspaper Syndicate, giving Goldberg's cartoons a wider distribution. By 1916, he was earning $50,000 per year and being billed by the paper as America's most popular cartoonist. Flossie was a one-page story written and drawn by Al Zier features the first appearance of the character Flossie in this humor story, and Al Zier was the artist of comic strips like So This Is Married Life, 1924-26, The Wows, 1930-33, Flossie, 1935-37, and Rookie Joe in 1941. He took over Susie Sunshine from Earl Hurd in 1930 and was succeeded a year later by Dick Richards. Funny Picture Stories, Volume 2, Number 2, published by Ultim Comics, October 1937 cover is by Bob Wood and Bob Wood also gave us the one page cartoon Goofy Gags as well as Vacation Cowgirl in a five page story under the alias BW and The Little Black Bag is a five page story signed by Bob Wood and Robert Wood born 1918 lived until 1962 he was an artist for the Harry A. Chesler group he contributed work to companies like Lev Gleason in Silver Streak, Daredevil and Boy Comics MLJ for Pep Comics and Top Notch and Novelty Press for Target Comics Wood has also worked on a daily comic called Goodbye Land in 1937 and 38 together with his Chesler colleague Charles Biro he also edited some Lev Gleason titles such as the famous Crime Does Not Pay in 1942 interesting note that Bob Wood was later convicted for murder and served prison time between 1958 and 61 other highlights of this issue include Cutter Carson, a two-page story from artist Craig Flessel. Fred Gardiner gave us Dinner Time on the African Velt in a two-page story. 
Will Har wrote Bombs of Destiny, a five-page aviation war story, also drawn by Fred Gardiner. Feature books number six, featuring Dick Tracy, published by David McKay, October 1937. The cover features artwork by Chester Gould, the detective mystery character Dick Tracy, and Junior. The highlight of this issue is 71 pages worth of Dick Tracy from writer-artist Chester Gould, featuring the characters Dick Tracy, Pat Patton, Junior Tracy, Lips Manless, Mimi, and Athnel Jones. And this featured reprints from the Dick Tracy newspaper comic strips from 1936. Lulu number no. 6 from Sun Publications in Chicago, Illinois came out with this monthly magazine, 52 pages, 25 cent cover price for this black and white magazine. And it was published from 1937 to 41 with 21 issues in total featuring body one panel gags and jokes containing adult content. Ace Comics number no. 7 published by David McKay Publications, October 1937. This was the first Halloween cover ever on a modern comic book. Some of the highlighted characters include Barney Google and Snuffy Smith, the Cats and Jammer Kids, Ripley's Believe It or Not, Jungle Jim, Crazy Cat, and Blondie. Detective Comics number no. 8 from DC Comics, October 1937. There is a Billy Wright pedigree copy of this book which shows you how early the Wright collection started. This is one of the first 250 or so comics ever published and by this time Billy Wright had already been buying DC Comics for over a year. Classic cover art for this issue is credited to Craig Flessel, and it's a familiar cover because it was also used for the cover at, of Atomic Comics eight years later. It is a Bruce Nelson cover drawn by Craig Flessel featuring the character Lou Gong. Some of the highlighted features include Speed Saunders in a six-page story from writer Gardner Fox and artist Craig Flessel. And this features the first appearances of Fred Dunn and the Skipper in this detective mystery. The Laughing Mummy is a six-page story from writer Gardner Fox under the alias Paul Dean, also with art by Craig Flussell. Will Eli wrote and drew Larry Steele in a six-page story. Siegel and Schuster gave us the four-page Spy story, and it featured the first appearance of Pierre Blanc. And Siegel and Schuster also gave us Slam Bradley in a lengthy 13-page story. The Funnies, number 13 from Dell Comics, October 1937. The cover is Our Boarding House with Major Hoople. Some of the highlighted features are Dan Dunn in a four-page story from Norman Marsh, Tailspin Tommy, three pages from Hal Forrest, Four Aces in a one-page story also from Hal Forrest. Sheldon Mayer gave us Scribbly in a two-page story. Don Dixon and the Hidden Empire was a two-page story written by Bob Moore with art by Carl Fufer, and the team also gave us Tad of the Tanbark in a one-page story. Tip Top Comics number 18 from United Features Syndicate, October 1937. Tarzan is the highlight of this issue with a cover feature, and this was the only ongoing comic series from United Features. King Comics number 19 from David McKay Publications, October 1937. This was David McKay's longest running ongoing series at this time. Features a Joe Musial cover. There is a Mile High Pedigree copy of this book from the Edgar Church Collection, and Popeye and Henry are the highlighted characters of the cover. New Adventure Comics number 20 from DC Comics, October 1937. It's also known as Volume 2, number 8. There is a Mile High Pedigree from the Edgar Church Collection and also a Billy Wright Pedigree copy. The Tom Sawyer-esque cover was drawn by Craig Flessel and features two kids lost in a swamp. Siegel and Schuster gave us a four-page story of Federal Men featuring Steve Carson, Junior Federal Men, and the first appearance of Operator 48 in this detective mystery. Dale Daring featured in a two-page story from writer-artist Will Eli, who also gave us the four-page supernatural story, Nadir, Master of Magic. Steve Conrad Adventure was back in a four-page story from writer-artist Craig Flussell, and there was an interesting promotional ad for The Lone Ranger. Popular Comics, number 21 from Dell Comics, October 1937. Highlighted characters include Dick Tracy, Skippy, Herbie, Don Winslow, Little Orphan Annie, Don w Harold Teen, The Gumps, Terry and the Pirates, and Winnie Winkle. Mickey Mouse Magazine, number 25, also known as Volume 2, number 13, features a Mickey Mouse cover, numerous comic strips, and stories and games. More Fun Comics number 25 from DC Comics, October 1937. The cover art is by Vincent Sullivan, featuring a football cover. There is a Billy Wright pedigree copy of this comic. Highlighted features include Sandra of the Secret Service and a three-page story from Will Eli. 
Johnny Law, four pages, also from Will I- Eli doing the writing and art. Siegel and Schuster, under the alias Leaguer and Ruths, gave us a four page Doctor Occult story. Craig Flessel handed us Hanko the Cowhand in a two page story, under the alias of Fless. He also gave us Bradley Boys in a two page story, alias Fless. And Pet Morgan in a two page story with the alias Fless. Talk About Talkies was a one page story written by Mary Patrick, also with art by Craig Flessel. Will Eli wrote and drew Jack Woods in the four-page Western Frontier story. Siegel and Schuster returned with Radio Squad, a two-page detective mystery story featuring Sandy Keen and Larry. And Russell Cole gave us Just for Fun in a one-page story. And The Lone Ranger was appearing in this title, also in a one-page promotional advertisement. And the longest-running comic book in the business was Famous Funnies, number 39, Published by Eastern Color, October 1937. It featured a story of the Boy Scouts of America. Napoleon, the comic strip, was featured five times in this issue. The cover is by Victor Pazmino, featuring the character Sam Smithers. Another football cover out this month. Buck Rogers returned in a four-page story from writer Philip Francis Nolan and art by Rick Yeager under the alias Dick Calkins. War on Crime returned from writer Rex Collier and pencils possibly by Kemp Starrett. In this crime story, the first regular crime story published in modern comics, the story features J. Edgar Hoover and its copyright The Ledger Syndicate. S.M. Iger gave us a one-page Bobby story aimed at young readers, copyright Eisner Iger, and Queenie was back, also from S.M. Iger, under the alias Bob Bliss.